What's up, man? I'm Mac Miller, and you're watching Billboard. This is my album, but I want everyone to ha like interpret it in their way, like have your own experience with it. Clock was just kind of told, you know, that us that he like watched this turtle movie with the album. He was like, it's crazy. I was like, okay, Clock, whatever. And then we couldn't figure anything out, so we were like, you know what? See what Clockwork's talking about. Put it on, and it blew my mind. I, I, it made me understand my own album to a degree that I didn't even understand it. For me, I'm still trapped inside my head. It kind of feel like it's a purgatory. To me, I just wanted to start the album off really honestly, you know? And so, like, the two voices, there's a voice, and that's kind of like, like a subconscious or a voice in my head, right? And it's like a different character that's starting the album. You know, if, if we're like at a circus type event, right, there's a person that comes out first and he's really weird and creepy and he's like, are you there and everyone's kind of like, what the fuck's going on? Who the fuck is this little dude? Then the curtain opens and, this, and the show starts. You know, that's kind of that guy. And, and then that's why the verse starts, you know, but me, I'm still, because it's like, boom, and then to yourself and then saying shit and then, yeah. I love this song. This song is like the heart and the soul of the album. Produced by me. <laughs> then the hook is my favorite part of this song. Because the hook is very simple. Then after you like put down your like preconceived like, oh that's weird, that's weird. And then you think you're like, uh, hey. I'm not real. I think I never was. I get a rush every time she There's a little relationship issues in there that we all go through. I went through and am still going through. And then and then I love how like I talk about that in the verse, first verse, and then Earl comes in and he's basically like, fuck these hoes, I'm getting money, fuck everything, like like, you know, head in the cloud with my toes and struggle, like that's fucking beautiful line right there. And then he says, go, right? Then the second verse, I'm just like, all right, fine, fuck all that shit, and I'd start rapping. Close my eyes before I cross the street. The car about to hit me, then he ought to beat. I was so nervous to spit that verse that I didn't think that it was gonna be the one that, that we used. Because I was just kind of like, I was like, all right, here we go. Like, this is fucking flying Lotus. You better fucking kill it. And I remember, like, I rap on it, and he was like, damn, I... I didn't expect you to, to go in like that. I was like, <laughs> I remember that that was at a point where the album, in the creative process, where I'd just been doing just a lot of depressing music for a while, um, and everything was just starting to feel like, I was like, damn, like the more I make this sad music, like the, the sadder I get, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you're like, you're like, let me just express myself. Like I'm not, you know, and but it's like, and I was like, hold up man, let me like fucking, let me get some, let me like just have some fun. Like, you know what I'm saying? This was like the ID Lab song on the album and I love it cause it's nostalgic and it, and it reminds me of like, that feeling that we used to get from, Making music and it just is like I, I, I like that I like that one. I'm laying in the studio. I'm sleeping on the beanbag, which at this point I've been using these beanbags so much that they're not even beanbags at this point. They're just like flat on the ground. So I'm sleeping in this beanbag, and Q walks into the studio, and the doors open in the sunlight, and I'm like, ah, like. I wake up to him going through beats. Like that was my last thought when I went to sleep and I woke up and this beats playing. And I'm like, yo. I was like, this is fucking crazy. I literally woke right up. I was like, Q, I was like this is it. Loaded up, wrote that verse. They just like, like they just like, it wasn't a lot of thought. It, like they just happened. Promise that I'll be a different man. Please 
Out of anything I've ever been addicted to, music is the craziest. You know, that's that is like, like it's it's to the point that I'm so into the shit that that everything else in my life disappears. But so the objects in the mirror is a comment of addiction and 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 just that approach to different things in your life, and then you know, it's just applying it to the situation with a female. Keep a watch till I'm dead. So how'd I get this red dot on my head? I love how that song follows objects like after such like a beautiful song and then just comes in like really nicely. And my favorite part is like the hook. I'm keeping watch till I'm dead. So I get this red dot on my head. Dot like that. And I went in and I was like I was like, oh I got the hook. And Chuck English was in there and I was like, just said suck my dick before, you, before I slap you with it. And I was like, that's it. And Chuck was kind of like, like he was like, really? Like, that's the hook? I was like, yeah. I was like, that's what else needs to be said. He's like, like the hit maker, Chuck English. So like he goes in there and listen to it. He's like, this is, might be crazy enough to work. Like, you know what I'm He was like, okay, I'm with it. Yeah. Looking at my life is like you watch movies and, and everyone's like, oh, that what a cliche. It is, you know, like my life is like a movie, it's cliche, but that's the point, you know, you watch movies, but before you turn the sound off. When I made this song, I just didn't even think it was going to be for the album. I just was like, sat down to like just make something. And then we were kind of like, oh, this guy's tight. This is actually really sick. And it made me super geek because it was the beat I made. I was like, oh. I went to my homie's funeral, right? That shit just kind of gave me a really different perspective on everything just because who he he was and is. You know what I'm saying? Who um, just gave me a different perspective on just life and my life. and. And, every, and how I interact with everyone and just everything. So first thing I did when I get home was made that song because I just had, like that's how you, that's why I love that song because it is that emotion. It's not in retrospect. I didn't wait two months and then make a song. Like I made the song while I still felt the exact, like wow the fucking, Shit that haunted me from the funeral was still that, you know what I'm saying? After saying all this shit, like, about, you know, whatever is going through my head, it's like, you know, sad, melancholy verses, and then at the end it says, came in for your money and left with all your hoes. And it's like, I remember someone tweeted me, I actually thought you were, like, saying something real in a verse, and then this line came. I was like, no, that's the fucking point. Like, you say all this shit and then you just realize, eh, money and bitches. <laughs> you're inside this aquarium and then you're looking out at the world that's looking in and talking about it. Like if you're so obsessed with like Kanye and Kim Kardashian are having a baby, so like low key the government just fucks some shit up. You didn't even know. You didn't even know it. <laughs> Just started a nuclear war, you know, you know it. <laughs> Euphoria is a song about a vagina. Yeah, swear to God. Because that's, because I've realized that fucking everything is about the vagina. That is the mecca of life, is the vagina. I've realized it, think about it, it's the most powerful thing in the world. I love depicting this fucking like crazy female like you know like that character and she just fucking is just fucked up you know what I'm saying like she just loves drugs just this is image in my mind of this girl that I've never met that I love writing about I was playing Tyler the album and he was like dude this shit is depressing and I was like yeah I know I need a fucking song that's like like, we just, like, I need the comic relief, dude. I was like, I need a show song that right when it comes on at the show, everyone's like, duh, duh. And like, that's exactly what this is. And it's like, I say in the end of the verse, I say, I'm filled with all sad songs, but this one I can laugh on. This is claymation. Fucked up, get away, that's a vacation. 
Claymation. Yeah, Claymation is the last song on the album, produced by ID Labs. It's with my homie Vinny Radio. I'm saying real something crazy. Out of every person I've sat with in the studio, and I've sat with a lot of people who can rap. Vinny is one of the most talented rappers I've ever witnessed in my life. Fresh off a step of boy swisher, pistol at the people that's a parent.